In my first video, I covered eight types of tornadoes, rope, cone, wedge, stovepipe, multi-vortex, rain-wrapped, drill bit, and satellite. In this video, I'll be covering eight more. An invisible tornado is a tornado with no condensation funnel, which is basically just the tornado itself. These tornadoes can form when the air below the cloud base is either too dry or the pressure dropped in the lift in the tornado vortex are insufficient to cool and condense a visible funnel. You can tell if there's a tornado by seeing if there's dirt or debris in the air. Once there is circulation on the ground, then that means there is rotation all the way up to the cloud base and you should take serious precautions. You might have heard that tornadoes always spin counterclockwise, in the northern hemisphere at least. However, about 2% of tornadoes rotate anticyclonically. This means they rotate clockwise in the northern hemisphere and counterclockwise in the southern hemisphere. One reason tornadoes can sometimes rotate in the opposite direction is that they are too small to be largely affected by the Coriolis effect, which briefly is the effect where circulating air is deflected toward the right in the northern hemisphere and toward the left in the southern hemisphere. There is a more significant amount of anticyclonic tornadoes that are associated with tropical cyclones. There are two types of water spouts, fair weather non-tornadic and tornadic. Fair weather water spouts are not associated with the rotating updraft. Rotating updrafts are displayed in supercells, and supercells usually have bad hail, heavy rain, high winds, and tornadoes. Since this kind of water spout is not in relation to a supercell, it is called fair weather. Most water spouts are non-tornadic and do not last very long, typically only about 2 to 20 minutes. They're usually weak, having winds of around 67 miles per hour. Tornadic water spouts are connected to a mesocyclone, just like tornadoes, hence the name. If a tornado travels from land to water, it would be called a tornadic water spout. Two tornadic water spouts are much rarer than their fair with their counterparts, since most areas that frequently get tornadoes get them in mostly landlocked places. In the Adriatic, Ionian, and Aegean seas, tornadic water spouts can make up about half of the total number of tornadoes. Long track tornadoes are any tornado with a path of at least 15 to 20 miles. There has to be a strong supercell with very good conditions in the atmosphere for a tornado to last a long time, so long track tornadoes tend to be more powerful than normal. If there is a forecast calling for long track tornadoes, you should take it seriously although you should take any severe weather forecast seriously. Some of these tornadoes can travel for over 50, 100, or even 200 miles. However, it's a lot rarer for a tornado to travel this far. Some notable examples of a long track tornado include the 2011 Phil Campbell Hackleberg EF5 at 132 miles, the 1925 Tri-State F5 at 219.2 miles, the recent 2021 Mayfield, Kentucky EF4 at 168.5 miles, as well as many, many more. Wind tornadoes are when two tornadoes occur at the same time within close proximity of each other. They are different from satellite tornadoes in the fact that they are formed from two distinct areas of circulation. A way that twin tornadoes can happen is through a process called occlusion. This happens when the first tornado starts to dissolve as cool air wraps around it, while another tornado begins to form in a more favorable part of the storm. The time that both tornadoes are on the ground is very short. This process is fairly common in very strong thunderstorms. When twin tornadoes do take place, one or both of the tornadoes are fairly weak. But in rare cases, the tornadoes can happen while they are both very strong. One example of this would be the 2014 Pilger and Nebraska twins. These tornadoes were both EF4s and were on the ground at the same time while they were both wedges. Scud clouds aren't actually tornadoes, but people often mistake them for one. This is because they resemble a funnel. The difference is that scud clouds do not rotate. They are also often associated with a thunderstorm, so it makes sense for people to think that one was a tornado. These clouds are formed as the warm updraft of a thunderstorm lifts the relatively warm air near the surface. These clouds condense as the warm, moist air saturates during the ascent and is pushed outward from the storm. Cold air funnels form underneath showers or weak thunderstorms when the air high up is especially cold. The funnels are most prevalent in the fall and spring when the sun can warm the lower levels of the atmosphere, causing heat to rise by convection and form showers, but temperatures around 15,000 to 20,000 feet above the ground are still quite cold. In very rare cases, cold air funnels can touch down and become tornadoes, causing weak EF0 damage most of the time. 
A tornado family is a group of tornadoes spawned from the same supercell. Tornado families can sometimes be mistaken for a single tornado, especially before the 70s, since the technology wasn't as good at the time. In some cases, tornado tracks may overlap, and expert analysis is needed to determine whether the damage was caused by a family or a single tornado. Sometimes, as with the Heston and Gosel F5s of 1990, separate tornadoes within a family of tornadoes merged together, making it difficult to determine whether the event was continuous or not. Some people think that the 1925 Tri-State Tornado might have been multiple different tornadoes that just appeared to be one continuous path. I hope you enjoyed this video, and please consider subscribing so you can learn more about weather phenomena on my channel, and also let me know if you'd like to see a video about the solar eclipse on October 14th when it happens.